Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmommy.wordpress.com. Since I had been sharing about what our relaxed homeschool routine looks like this year, last week I decided that I would kind of break it down by subject to give all of you an idea of how we get each subject done in our house, even though we don't specifically separate out our subjects like a regular school day. But math is one of those things that, yeah, does tend to get separated a lot. And that's what I'm going to be talking about with you today. Last week I shared language arts, and today I'm going to tell you how we do math in our relaxed homeschool. Before I even get this video started, um, there have been a lot of people recently who have been requesting that I keep my comments turned on for my videos. And so I always say this at the end of my videos, but I realize that most people don't watch videos completely through. So I thought that I would just mention it and mention it in the beginning of this video that I do not turn my comments off. YouTube has has been disabling my comments since the spring. So it's not me, trust me, I miss having comments, you have no idea. But yeah, that's why I do things the way that I do, where I kind of post over on the community tab. So anyway, with that being said, um, this video is going to be less involved than my language arts video was. Because really the way that we approach math in our relaxed homeschool is pretty cut and dry, and we don't, we don't pull in as many different methods as we did for, for language arts because there's just so many different ways you can approach language arts. And there really is with math too, but with us, I really like the simplicity of everything and math is one of those things that my kids really, really used to hate and they used to be really nervous about it. So it's important to me that we do it in a way that does not complicate it. So I do wanna point out that while we use a math curriculum for my kids, um, a lot of times our unit study activities will involve math. Sometimes it might involve where we work out questions like Marco Polo took four years to reach China, and if it took him four years, how many days was that, how many weeks, how many months. So a lot of times we'll bring in, you know, different math equations into our unit studies. And also, a lot of times we do a lot of baking, and I tend to work, you know, baking and cooking into our unit studies a lot. And baking is a fantastic way for your kids to learn fractions. I honestly think that's the best way for your kids to learn fractions because they get an idea of the sort of things that you would actually need fractions for in real life because a lot of times it's just too abstract for some kids. But if they, you know, understand that if you need, you know, a cup of flour and you only have one fourth cup measuring cup, they will over time learn that you need to do four scoops of the one fourth measuring cups to equal one because four one fourth cups equals one. Or you know, if you need to do three quarter cups and you only have a half cup and a quarter cup, they have to learn you know, how to do the different combinations. Or if you're doubling recipes, if you're having recipes, that is, those are two of the ways that we incorporate math into our unit studies. It's not something that happens as much as language arts being incorporated into our unit studies, but when math is incorporated into them, we do not do our math curriculum for that day. So it's kind of like a treat for my kids since we already covered math, they do not have to do their curriculum. But yes, the main way that we do math in our relaxed homeschool is curriculum. With my first and third grader, they use Abeka, and my older children use ctcmath.com. And when I say older children, I mean my kids who are in fourth, sixth, seventh, eighth, tenth, and twelfth grade. They all do ctcmath.com, and my first and third graders do Abeka. Now, the now. There, I know that there are a lot of math curriculums out there that are really intense and take a lot of time. And that is not something that I particularly want in a math curriculum. As I mentioned earlier, my kids, you know, they all had an aversion to math at, at one point. So I really want to make it so that my kids, if they don't enjoy doing math, at least that they are not 
crying or stressed out while it's happening. And I've found that a lot of the regular, you know, math curriculums, they have a lot of drill and kill in them. And, you know, drilling is not a bad thing. But if you are drilling your kids like with 25 to 30 to even 50 problems a day, that's when it becomes drill and kill. Now, I do actually put math drills on our whiteboard every day for my kids and it will typically be, you know, like basic math facts, maybe, you know, like basic multiplication, basic division, basic addition, basic subtraction, just to kind of keep them, um, just to keep them, uh, used to doing it, you know, kind of just to keep them refreshed on it. But it, usually if I do have math drills on the whiteboard for the kids, and I, I, I do, I shouldn't say if I do, I do, I put math drills on the whiteboard every day. It's usually between like four and eight drills. That's it. I don't, I don't like the drill and kill method and I don't do it with my kids. And that is actually one thing that I really like about the Abeka for the younger kids is that it is not drill and kill and it's not boring. They actually use a spiral based method of teaching math. So the children who do the Abeka math will be doing all sorts of things in one lesson. So this is my first graders book. And if you can see, you know, she's got some subtraction. She's got some money there. Um, she has place value at the bottom. And then I will, I will always have her do two sides of each page each day. Um, and it really only takes maybe 10 minutes. And then on the other side, just to give you an example, um, it says to write down the answer to combinations. So I'll usually tell her, okay, write the answer to seven plus three, six plus four, those sorts of things. There's fact families, um, learning about dividing things in halves, and then there's just some dominoes to teach adding. But, um, so with my first graders, Abeka, it really is cut and dry and it really holds her interest enough that she actually likes to do her math. She asks me, even when, you know, we don't have school for the day, um, she asks me if she can do her math. She really does like this math book. So my third grader, yeah, the cover fell off of her math book the other day. My third grader, um, as you can see, it's still the spiral ba based approach to math. I did notice though that as the kids get older in these Abeka books, um, they do start to get a little bit more, not so much drilling, but they, they get more intense as they get older. So what I have been doing, if I find that they have a page that is something that I know is just going to overwhelm them, um, I will just circle, I'm trying to find a good example. I will just maybe circle a few of the problems for for her to do so I might circle now if they're easier ones like this I'll just have her do all of them but sometimes you know like the problems at the bottom I might have her do every other one or maybe like two um, um, two of them and I will do the same thing in the back I will just circle random problems for her to do if she has a hard time with them I will help her and then I will have her do some more on her own just to make sure that she has the hang of it but if she understands it she only has to do the ones that I circled I also want to point out that with the Abeka math you know I don't I, I'm guessing that there's a teacher's manual for it I don't use teachers manuals so I'm assuming there is and I know that in the past curriculums that we have used the math teachers manuals really have a lot of involved lessons that they tell you to do with the kids and they actually expect you to kind of teach a lesson to the kids before you have them do their pages and that's not how we do it um, in our house all that we do is you know if it's a new concept I'll just go over the box with her and then I will help her maybe with a few of the new concept math problems and that's it you know there's no like me standing in front of the room teaching a math lesson I just sit down and I'm there with her next to her through her entire math worksheet if that's what she chooses but yeah that's all that I really do if there's a new concept I just sit there and explain it to her as she's doing it and then we work a few together it's nothing like formal teaching it's just one-on-one -on -one time mom and daughter or mom and son whoever it is that I'm helping and that is how I also do it with my first grader too. So I don't like stand in front and teach a math lesson. Um, now for my older kids, CTC math is fantastic for my kids just because the, 
they usually only have to do about 10 math problems for each lesson. So how CTC math is, is that it will usually have them watch a video, usually about three to five minutes long, explaining the concept. And then after that, they will do problems. And as I mentioned, it's it averages about 10 problems for them to do. Um, now, if you are uncomfortable with your kids only doing 10 problems each day, I'm totally fine with that. Um, but if you're uncomfortable with that, they do have a little tab where you can click for your kids to have more problems to get more things done. Now with my kids, if I'm finding that those 10 problems just weren't enough and that they really aren't getting the concept, what I will have them do rather than adding on more problems because I know that if they're getting frustrated, adding on is not gonna help and they're not gonna retain anything if they're irritated. So if my kids are not understanding enough through those 10 problems, I will just repeat the, the same lesson the next day because I'm I'm not in a race to, to finish you know to finish the curriculum or to finish the grade level I really believe in letting your kids um, learn at their own pace and that's what I really like about CTC math is that if you want to repeat a lesson four times you can do it you know or if you choose not to do that if you want your kids to do extra problems you can do that as well but CTC math is a phenomenal option for um, relaxed homeschooling just because it is to the point, it's so clear, and it, again, is not that drill and kill. I do have to add, though, that there are math games on it, and a lot of times my kids will ask me if they can play. They actually have timed, um, I just bit my lip, they have like timed multiplication facts and timed addition facts, and it, it's, it's like games for the kids to play, and very often when we're not doing school, my kids will ask me if they can go on my computer so that they can play these games. So, yeah. These are the two things that, these are the two curriculums that I have found work best for our relaxed homeschool. That and also, as I mentioned earlier, incorporating some unit study activities, real life unit study activities. Um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, like calculating the, if someone travels somewhere, you know, how long that is in days and months and weeks. Or, you know, sometimes we might look at a map and we'll figure out how far it is, say, from Australia to China. And then we might say, how much further is it to um, to uh, India? And then I'll have them figure out a, a, the difference between the, the distances of the two. But again, the main way that we do math are these two curriculums and I can't recommend them even more. This isn't even a review video. I just wanted to tell you how I use them, but that's, you know, I, I have to recommend these to you because I found that for the past few years, they have been awesome and I have not been disappointed with them. And anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one over on Instagram because I mentioned earlier, YouTube always disables my comments or you can check the community tab. Very often I will post the thumbnail for, you know, a new video there. So you can leave comments there too if, you, if you'd like or on any of the the posts there. You can leave a comment there. And if you like my work, you can check out my Patreon page and see what rewards I have for my patrons there. And today I would like to give a shout out to my patron, Jordan. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. Um, it is just, it's amazing to me how many people have just put, put their, their faith in me and, you know, um, have, have expressed their appreciation for the things that I do, and you have no idea how much I appreciate that. That encouragement is what keeps me going, and I hope you all have a great day.